Hi, <clears throat> my name is Giorgi. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, make a statement on which my whole ideology is based. Um, yeah, uh, I really believe that um, no. when I'm oftenly asked that, uh, Gio, uh, what are your preferences in politics? What do you believe in? What are your opinions about certain stuff? And uh, whenever I answer them, when I, when I share uh, my opinions with them, I often get this look of sickness as if being an idealist um, means to be an idiot. Uh, I don't think so. You can clearly uh, read this uh, stuff up I prepared. Uh, in my belief, uh, being an idealist uh, is uh, more based on reality than the realism. And so, uh, let me explain uh, what I'm trying to say. Uh, here's uh, what to think about. Uh, and, uh, a realist uh, can always identify a problem uh, but the ways he offers uh, how to solve this problem is way beyond any reality. Uh, and uh, yeah, sure, we can always say uh, what, what should, how things should be, but uh, no one can offer any real uh, way how to achieve that. But whenever uh, an idealist uh, asks uh, of this, uh, he can identify also, he can identify the problem. Uh, because he has a critical uh, way of thinking. But the ways idealist offers uh, to uh, achieve this uh, utopian thing and uh, anything ideal is uh, more uh, close to reality because we are very passionate about it and we, are, we will do anything to achieve it. But uh, it may bring some problems because uh, that's why uh, uh, there are so many historical acts uh, that are very cruel and not so good and evil, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, how things might have been, how things should be, and how things will be, of course, based on my personal ideas and opinions. Um, oh, okay, doesn't work. So, first of all, I would like to bring up uh, the condition of uh, human uh, nature, uh, which is called uh, the state of nature, in which uh, you see how things are, uh, everyone is happy, everyone lives in harmony, uh, but uh, it is a, a really interesting topic because uh, <laughs> because uh, such great thinkers as uh, Thomas uh, Hobbes and John Locke uh, thought that uh, absolute uh, freedom is only achievable in the state of nature. Uh, the state of nature means that uh, there must have been a time where, uh, before the civil societies became into existence. There must have been a time before we formed government and state and such things. Uh, the, the reason why uh, these uh, thinkers thought that uh, absolute freedom is only achievable in this condition because uh, in the state of nature we don't have any uh, there is no property, there is no justice, there is no injustice, there, uh, and there is only uh, war against all. Uh, but uh, this thing, uh, when, uh, when I first heard of uh, the state of nature, I thought, isn't uh, it the same exact thing as anarchy? Uh, I looked up uh, in the internet and I read a whole bunch of definitions of, definitions of anarchy, and uh, pretty much they sound all the same. The state of lawlessness and uh, political disorder due to which, uh, due to governmental absence and any governmental authority, absence of any governmental authority, uh, absence of law, absence of order, and they pretty much sound uh, uh, the same. But I found that one definition of anarchy, uh, which uh, 
Yeah, I found that one definition of anarchy, <coughs> uh, which is um, a utopian people uh, living uh, joyfully in the uh, absence of law, uh, freely, because they enjoy themselves there and they don't want to hurt each other, they won't uh, commit any crime and they, they're uh, happy in there. So, basically what I'm, uh, where I'm going uh, is that uh, in my opinion, uh, the, the, that kind of state, I would not call it anarchy, I would call that harmony, and that kind of uh, state is the phase of human moral uh, in which we don't need any laws and regulations to not commit any crimes and just enjoy ourselves. Of course, there are more uh, complex issues uh, such, uh, such as institutions, economy, but this, these are the details we don't have much time to talk about right now. Uh, so, uh, the first things first, I want you to realize that human moral is a whole different thing uh, than the human nature. Uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna uh, be back to that, but before, uh, I would like to bring up uh, this issue, <laughs> this topic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to say next, uh, please consider that it's uh, just my own opinion and idea and don't take it too seriously, uh, but uh, let's say that uh, United States was a project uh, of making peace among the world. Just imagine the scales and amount of uh, land and amount of people and amount of uh, diversity and culture we are talking about. Uh, United States uh, consists of uh, uh, five, uh, uh, 50 uh, states. Uh, and each state has its law, and uh, we have all the different cultures living there, or different religions, and uh, the, the way USA had to uh, go to achieve this is that they only had one civil war. And for me, it's, uh, I think that it's the least a human uh, history can remember, uh, the, the sacrifice human history can remember to achieve a thing like this. Because, well, my country has to fight and uh, swim in its own blood for centuries and centuries. Um, so, uh, talking about USA, uh, human, I want to make clear that, uh, I want to explain why the project uh, USA failed. Uh, before that, uh, in the meantime, uh, there was another power rising in the other part of the world, uh, which was uh, strictly focused on the uh, policy of practice. They didn't uh, test anything, they just were motivated on practice. Yeah, it is uh, US star. Uh, they uh, started to unite in countries by force uh, and with the hope that in the end uh, the peace would have prevailed. Uh, but. Uh, in the end, I would like to say that uh, human, tri human nature triumphed and just because uh, not, uh, they could not let their power go, uh, the, the war began again and again and the idea of utopia just um, was moved aside uh, in the future far, far away. Uh, so, uh, let me get to the topic uh, where I was talking about the difference between uh, human nature and human moral or morality. Uh, human nature is something uh, that consists of uh, the lusts and desires uh, that human uh, strives for. We always, and it doesn't change, it never changes. Uh, we always uh, strive for poverty, happiness, power, money and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, human nature that we, cannot ne we can never change. But on the other hand, we have human moral, uh, which is uh, basically a police of human nature. Uh, by, uh, if we have uh, a high, mm, highly developed moral, morals, uh, we can control our nature, we can prevent uh, our desires and uh, things that can lead to stealing, killing and all the bad things you can imagine right now. Uh, let me... no, not like that. <laughs> let me explain what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say. Uh, imagine a situation where I, I am envious of some uh, person owning a car, which is my dream car, and I really want that car. 
and I hate that someone else has that car. And imagine me standing beside that car alone in the street and there is no one, there is no camera uh, and I can literally break that car down or steal it and I can owe it. Uh, but I will not do that. Not because uh, I'm not afraid of, uh, I'm not because I'm afraid of uh, law and I will get caught and I'll get arrested. That's uh, less likely because there is no one to see me. But uh, I won't do that because that, per that person, uh, the owner of the car, will get upset the next morning. And I don't, I don't really want to make anyone upset. So that's basically what uh, a highly developed, not highly, but developed human moral could be. Uh, now that we know uh, the ingredient uh, of uh, the serve, uh, now that we know the ingredient, how to uh, walk on the road towards the happy society, towards the uh, impossible society, the utopian society, we need to think about the ways how to provide, how to make progress, how to uh, develop uh, the human morals worldwide. Uh, first of all, the first thing I could come up with is education. Uh, ask yourselves, uh, in what uh, one kind of society the crime rate is uh, the highest? In educated society or uneducated society? I think the answer is pretty obvious. Uneducated society brings uh, more crime than educated ones. Uh, so, uh, no, <laughs> not yet. Uh, I was thinking about the ways uh, how to uh, provide proper education uh, to anyone possible in the uh, scales of worldwide. Uh, but first we need to acknowledge uh, what, is, uh, what is the base. What should be taught? What should be? What should we teach to children? But the base should be uh, based on uh, the age a person has, uh, because we cannot teach deep philosophy to children in kindergartens or in school low, lower grades and stuff like that. Uh, we need to acknowledge what has to be taught to them. Uh, I can probably say that uh, in Georgia, uh, some universities have this. Uh, programs which offer the obligatory courses uh, which teach uh, we, we, in which uh, the teaching consists the, such uh, great thinkers such as Plato, uh, Machiavelli, Hobbes, uh, Loki and authors like that and the teaching is based on what is good, the definition of good and right, the values of freedom, the values of peace and love uh, and basically uh, all the things we should, everyone should know. Uh, but that uh, course is um, is being controlled very strictly because it's obligatory. No matter how what a profession a student chooses, no matter uh, the major course, we everyone is obligated to study this. And if uh, if a student fails it, then it fails the whole university and he's uh, kicked out, or she. Uh, so, there is uh, also uh, another, another way, uh, which is pretty much not serious, but... Uh, okay, a Georgian, famous Georgian writer, Guram Bachanashvili, wrote a book uh, which is called A Man Who Loved Literature uh, Very Much. Uh, and in this book, a main character offers us uh, the idea that uh, we can create uh, the cells in which we will imprison the uh, criminals and uh, this room, the cell, is full of books and we will not release the criminal un until he or she reads each and every book in it. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it needs some development, it, it, need, it needs some work and maybe we could use it, this idea somehow. I don't know, but it's pretty interesting to me. Uh, and in the end, uh, uh, I would like to uh, give a little talk about music. Um, I think uh, music is the human's best creation, honestly. Maybe I think like this because I'm myself a musician. Uh, I'm a vocalist of the metal band. Uh, and I really believe that if we aim, if we aimed music correctly, as it was said in the video, the first video we showed it, 
if we aim to do music uh, correctly, we could bring people together, we could connect them and we could uh, make the understanding between each other. And so, I would like to uh, uh, tell a little story about the journey I had uh, last summer in Caucasian regions. Uh, I had a tour with my band and we came across some national secu security issues between the borders of uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia. As you know, these two countries uh, have a conflict uh, situation between each other and uh, it is commonly known that they hate each other. Uh, well, I don't think so. Uh, I think that uh, the hate between these uh, two countries uh, is just... Uh, uh, it's not true because the younger generation doesn't have anything to do with the hatred at war. They are just uh, affected and uh, they are uh, victims of the hatred uh, of the older generation. So, uh, how do I know this? Uh, I will explain. Of course, uh, we, we managed to we still managed to play a gig in both countries, but after a few months we wanted to make a concert uh, in our hometown and as we made a lot of friends and fans uh, in those two countries, we invited them in our concert in our hometown and they gladly attended. But uh, what happened next uh, amazed me and uh, it was the motivation that drew me to do a lot of work, a lot of projects I'm working on right now. Uh, I can, let me explain what I'm talking about. Uh, these two uh, representatives of uh, Azerbaijani and uh, Armenia, they enjoyed the concert so much, they, they shared the same emotions, the same passion, they, uh, they were connected by our music and that, that was the best moment in my life that I, my music connected someone and uh, it was really emotional for me. And in the end, uh, we went we went out drinking and we had really fun. Uh, we spent we spent a really good time together. And you know what? They are friends right now. They may not meet every day because they live in different countries, but we have social media, we have internet, and they they are really good friends right now. And occasionally, maybe once in two months, they meet and have a good time. And I think uh, this is a great way to. Uh, Reach peace, and this is a great way to make peace. In the end, before I go, uh, I would like to leave a little message to you guys. After this talk, I'm gonna go home and think about the ways how to uh, think about the ways how to achieve the impossible, how to achieve utopia, how to uh, what are the ways, more ways to walk on the road to that world. But before that, I would like to ask you people to. Please start loving each other, please share, start sharing happiness for one cannot truly really achieve true happiness while others lack of it. Please smile more and join me on the road to a better world.